Let's talk about prevention and management of obstetric laceration and vaginal delivery. So perineal anatomy. Perineal body is the most common site of laceration. Superficial and deep muscles of the uh, the perineal body contains the superficial and deep muscles of perineal membrane, transverse perineal muscle, and attachment of bobo cavernosis muscles. Anal sphincter complex is inferior to the perineal body. It contains the external sphincter, which is consists of voluntary voluntary skeletal muscles and the inner internal sphincter which is under autonomic control provides 80 percent of resting pressure of the anal canal the entire anal sphincter complex extends up to up the canal about four centimeters incidence and definition 80 percent of uh, vaginal deliveries will have some some degree of laceration. First degree is just the perineal skin. Second degree is the perineum involving perineal muscles. And there you have oasis, obstetric anal sphincter injuries. About 3% will be um, third degree laceration and also in the third degree col um, in the third degree we divide it into A, B and C. So 3A is less than 50% of the external sphincter, 3B is greater than 50% and 3C is involving the internal sphincter. 1% will have 4th degree, which is um, involving the anal epithelium. <coughs> Episiotomy um, uh, effects of episiotomy or oasis on the pelvic floor muscles. There's a possible increase for anal incontinence, medial lateral. Episiotomy is a uh, three millimeter midline starting point in the uh, posterior fourchette and directed laterally at an angle of 60 degrees from the midline towards the issue of tuberosity. High risk, there's a high risk um, reported bowel symptoms if there's a fourth degree laceration at six months postpartum uh, ten times more likely to report worsening worse bowel control compared to the third degree <coughs> pelvic organ prolapse surgery compared to c-sections in a vaginal delivery, it's ten times, or I mean nine times more. V, v, uh, uh, vaginal assist, uh, vacuum assisted vaginal delivery also nine times more. Forceps is eighty, t uh, twenty times more. Risk factors for oasis. Forceps is five point five times. Vacuum four times. Midline episiotomy is four times if combined with the forcep is 5.6 times for third degree and 10 times for fourth degree. Increased birth weight, primate, Asian, induction of labor, ep epidurals, OP, position, first degree relatives, with OASIS. Pre prevention strategies, maternal perineal massages, 
uh, digital perineal massage from 34 weeks for a primate can decrease trauma that require repair and decrease need for episiotomy. Massage during the second stage may also help reduce third and fourth degree laceration, about 50% reduction. Manual um, perineal support technique and data is not well described. Warm compresses reduce third and fourth degree laceration by 50%. Birthing position lateral pushing with delayed pushing showed decreased laceration. Delay <coughs> delayed pushing, there's no difference. Waiting one hour before pushing versus three hour. Indications for episiotomy. There is no indication currently for episiotomy, but it's based on um, pay, um Provider judgment, medial lateral possible is um, better for protection for against third and fourth degree laceration, but increased perineal pain and dyspareunia compared to no episiotomy at three months. Medial lateral is uh, also protective against fecal incontinence after oasis. Suture techniques. First degree skin su uh, skin is unsu unsutured, but a post uh, reapproximated is better for per uh, dyspareunia and pain. Adhesive glue can be an alternative. Second degree um, continuous suture is better than interrupted. There's less pain at, at 10 days, less analgesia use, and lower risk of having to remove the suture postpartum. Vicro is better than chromic. For anal mucosa, 3O uh, Vicro double layer. For the sphincter, end to end or overlap repair is okay either use 3o or 2o micro antibiotics for uh, anal uh, injury single dose of antibiotics at time of repair is reasonable second generation cephalosporin either cefotetin or cefoxetin and 2 gram iv immediate or long-term sequelae after six weeks, 20%, 25% can experience wound breakdown and 20% experience wound infection. Up to 12 weeks of pain if there's wound complications. Perineal rectal or rectovaginal fistula can form. 10% of rectovaginal fistula is associated with OB trauma. Postpartum management, stew softener or oral laxative, psyllium bulking agent such as Metamucil, one tablespoon TID, soften, uh, stew softeners, docusay sodium, 100 milligrams BID, osmotic agents such as max citrate, 200 milligrams one time daily or <coughs> or go lightly polyethylene glycol 200 milligram stimulants such as Cina one tab 50 milligram BID adequate, adequate pain control is um, essential and also monitor for urinary retention complications of oasis bleeding infection wound breakdown which might require wh which may require primary closure if severe otherwise we can 
expectantly managed. Inadequate repair of laceration may lead to rectal vaginal fistula formation. Long term or short term and long term care. Pelvic floor exercise may decrease postpartum urinary incontinence. These patients are at increased risk for anal incontinence. Subsequent uh, pregnancies, patient is at a four times uh, risk to have another oasis. However, patients should be informed the absolute risk of recurrence is only about 3%. C-suction may be offered in subsequent pregnancies if any of the following, um, if the if the patient uh, experienced anal incontinence after delivery, if there was a complication with the wound, if there's need for repeat laceration repair, and uh, patient's request due to psychological trauma or stress after the event.